What's up, nerd friends? We're going to talk about five things that you need to know about your XR10 Pro. Five things that you need to know about your maybe shiny new XR10 Pro. Maybe you're thinking about getting one. This will help you kind of cover some of the basics real quick and easy. Well, let's start out with item number one, programming devices. You can install these, set them up, use them, drive around, and use them on their default settings that are listed in the instruction manual chart. But if you need to make programming changes, things like turn on the reverse, adjust the timing, things of that nature, you're going to need a programming device. The XR10 Pro 160 G2, the anything in the XE Run series for the most part. If it's got XR in the name, it'll work with the LCD programming box, the new OTA Bluetooth wireless connector, or the, or the older Wi-Fi Express as well. The speed controls themselves, their features are dictated by their listing. These don't add any features to the speed control. They don't unlock any settings. They do allow you to do firmware updates and things of that nature. They do allow you to read uh, data logging. If your speed control has that available, it doesn't add data logging or anything like that. Number two item applies to XE Run and beyond, but it basically comes down to one of the topics that we get often here is that you get a new build, you install the system or the speed control, whatever the case may be, go to fire it up and something's not right, and you try to hook up your programming device and make changes, it still doesn't fix it. You turn the reverse on, reverse doesn't work. That's because the calibration hasn't been done. I've been amazed over the years that folks overlook calibrating, even when they've gotten into the point of the hobby where they're buying top of the line stuff, they've never calibrated a speed controller, didn't know about it for whatever reason. Uh, once you get the calibration done, you can go back and do whatever tuning and changes you may to, need to do, but make sure that before you do your plug in the box stuff, that you do the most important kind of real step one, which is the calibration. Topic number three, power capacitors yes they are needed they keep your speed control alive and well there's a phenomenon when a electronic speed control operates called ripple current it causes damage to the speed control so we have power capacitors to protect them and then we've also added in resistors and diodes and all sorts of goofy stuff on these circuit boards that protect the speed control from breaking voltage spikes and things like that in the XR10 Pro G2, only one in the lineup, as well as the XR10 Pro Elite, there is reverse voltage protection. Only the XR10 Pro G2, the XR10 Pro G2 Elite, and the Axe have the reverse voltage protection built in at the time of this video. However, the power capacitors do not. So if you were to plug one of these in, the power caps pop. You can either replace it with more of the same, you can do the A module upgrade cap, or you can put in a non-polarity capacitor as well. These are available in two flavors, big and a small stock is a small one the modified is the big one they do not have any polarity so you just solder these on in place of the old power capacitor and then if you were to plug it in backwards nothing bad happens this guy still provides all the protection that a power capacitor needs it's just added in this non-polarity situation so that it doesn't get blown up when things get hooked up backwards something that we run into once in a while is damage to the fans the blades get broken off the, they pop out of the housing and that usually comes due to no fan guard so if your speed control doesn't have a fan guard on it already, you can make one with a zip tie scrap, a piece of plastic. Just take a strip of plastic, drill two holes in each end that are you know the same space as the fan mounting screws, and that'll stop the fan from coming up and out of the housing. Inside of these fan guards, there's a little finger that pokes down from this high spot that stops the fan from coming up and down in there, and that's what keeps the fans alive. So if you have a fan on your speed control and it's just bare, it's liable to get damaged really. There's stuff will fly around, catch a blade, pop a blade off. The, the whole spinny part will come up out of the housing. So these simple, you know, basically free devices with two little holes drilled them does wonders to keep your fan alive. So fans were item number four. Item number five will be the differences. There are so many XR10s out there. There's pros, there's stock specs, there's just stock. So let's talk about that for a second. First and foremost, the XE Run XR10 just stock and stock spec are the ones that are smaller, lighter, shave some bucks out of the budget for the spec racing world. If you're racing like 13.5 class, 17.5 class, 21.5 class, stuff like that, that's what those are going for. If you're building a drifter that needs a 13.5, those are great cost savings. If you're looking for a basic sensor setup for a simple build, those are a great way to go. It has all the tunability that you'll need, works with the same boxes and stuff that these guys do. But the main thing that folks are looking for is the difference between the XR10 Pro Legacy, the XR10 Pro G2, and which I have here is two XR10 
Pro G2 Elites. Now, let's just get the, the regular G2 and the Elites out of the way. The main difference between the Elite and the regular G2 is that the Elite does not include the extra plug-in switch harness that you can silver for remote mounting switches. They are available in different colors. They have the gunmetal, and then you can get a colored line. There's a, several options. And they come with smaller wire pre-installed, kind of like the Pro guys run. So the Elite basically has different size wire and does not come with the extra external switch and is available in different case colors. Now the Legacy is pretty much the old version of the XR10 Pro. It, that's why it's called Legacy, stands for old. Does not have the external switch and does not have any reverse voltage protection. It's pretty much the old version still available for sale. It's a lot like they do with the phones these days. You can still get the old one for a few bucks cheaper if you like it. And because everybody loves a bonus item, let's talk for a second about motor rotation. If you're looking for a speed control that needs motor rotation adjustability, only the G2 has that. The Legacy does not. So if you have a backwards transmission vehicle and you meet, need to make counterclockwise rotation your forward mode of operation, got to get a G2 for that. Either that or maybe the XR8 if you're, you're going that route as well. But if, you know, we're talking about XR10s right now. Other topic with motor rotation is the end bell timing on the motor now goes opposite because the motor's going opposite. So a real quick and simple test that you can do is set your vehicle up for the rotation that you need turn the end bell timing opposite direction run the motor very very slowly like let's say a quarter throttle you set the trim to something and pick it and then listen to it and then adjust the timing and make sure that when you go the opposite direction the timing is going up that way you know you got everything right just helps get your head around what you're dealing with as far as the changes and stuff like that. And all of this timing stuff goes along with the gearing. If you're not sure about your gearing or your timing, less end bell timing is always safer, just like a smaller pinion gear is always safer. The big thing that folks talk about these days is that you turn the timing up, you go up in the gearing, and you'll end up with less torque but there's so much torque anyway that a lot of times those changes or differences aren't noticed it just changes the minimum rpm so smaller pinion gear lower timing ends up lower rpm it actually makes it feel smoother and then higher pinion gear or a bigger pinion gear or more timing can make it feel like it has more minimum rpm which actually makes it feel a little more punchy sometimes so just something to consider thanks for tuning in if you have any questions comments or concerns please shoot us an email north at hobbywing.com thanks for watching everybody